Hello, and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change in your life. I'm here to guide you, inform you, and hopefully help you to triumph over trauma and the long list of symptoms that come along with it. This podcast series is to bring knowledge, share stories, and open up conversation around hope for those of you that suffer with the difficulties that present themselves in your life from diagnosed or undiagnosed trauma. Labeled or not, I know you need help, and so do those that have graciously taken the time to have these conversations with me. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. I'm so glad you're here. I have Ophelia Martin with me today. She's a wonderful hypnotherapist. And we're going to dive in and chat about all things hypnotherapy and some of the different ways that you might not be aware that hypnotherapy can be helpful. So thanks, Ophelia, for being here. Thank you, Laura, for having me. So I wanted to chat all about some of the different ways that you kind of dig in and help people, because I know that one of them actually happens to be that you treat some people, you have a specific patient, but you work with someone who has cancer. And some people might think, well, how the heck is hypnosis going to help cancer or anyone that has it? And I think that it's important to share all the different ways that hypnosis can help. So I'd love for you to dive right Right in. We're going to just go into the deep end and start talking about how you are helping that person and the different ways that people who may be dealing with cancer at whatever stage they're at, that you can be helpful to them. I'm going to go ahead and just hand it over to you a little bit and have you start sharing a little bit about that. How, maybe even why or how that first came to be for you to start there. You mean for the client who came to see me with the cancer? Did they just come to you or did you yeah. happen? They just came to you and said, can yeah. you help me? And yes, so- exactly. And so the patients who have cancer have a second effect and they have a strong nausea, strong, all the sexy stuff. And it's very difficult physically to cope with that. So hypnosis really helps for the relaxation, the helps of get a sense of control as well. But it as well have effect on those physical symptoms like diarrhea, like throwing up and all of that. And when I had this client coming back after two weeks and said, my diarrhea reduced to nearly nothing, it was really nice and it gives me a sense of relief. So that's what you want to hear after you've done some hypnosis. Yes, that's so incredible. When you've got those things going on in your body and you're trying to manage life and you're trying to do the things and you're trying to help your body heal and you have all of those unfortunate side effects sometimes of the medication. That can be really difficult. Or the cancer itself. I know hypnosis can help with pain, with people who are really struggling with pain that have cancer. Sleeping is another one that because of discomfort, because of the medications, because of the stress of the whole situation. There's so many things that can show up that I think can be super helpful. And you mentioned that it kind of helps give control back. Exactly. Because that's what you feel that when you have this illness, sometimes you don't even feel ill and you feel like you have no control of anything. You have control of nothing, not your life, not your body. And that is really frustrating, you know. So that's what I'm working with my clients. It's to give them a sense of control. And I do that by for example, taking them to a nice little chalet in a mountain with some snow outside and I make them first in a really nice fireplace, get all the sensation, the visual to make them quite deep and sense of security. Then I take them outside where it's snowing, cold, you know, they are warm. And I take them on a tour to a motor ski or ski moto. How do you say that? Oh, a snowmobile. Snowmobile, exactly. So I take them to accelerate and have fun with it and then to slow down. And then here comes the suggestions. You see, you can control your mind as well as your body, etc., etc. And this is what I do and they really like. And I, another thing I do is I ask them to take their glove out and to imagine, sense and visualize some snowflake coming onto their hand. And then it starts to anesthetize, sorry for my English, anesthetize 
exercise and I then start to develop a sense of anesthetized hand and then I ask them to take control of that and to spread where they need in the next chemotherapy where there would be needles or something else and that they can put themselves back again into that state, into that sensation of anesthetized. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it. <laughs> Like a numbing feeling, a numbness. Yeah, numbing. Here we go. Thank you. And then from there, yeah, they can have, again, a sense of control and use that when they need it. And that right there helps with the pain. If they're having pain somewhere, they can do that as well. I love that. What a fun yeah. visual. And I don't think people understand sometimes that we do get to play in some of those fun little visuals or metaphors, as we say, in the hypnosis process. But what it does is it really allows the mind, because the mind works in incredible symptoms symbols and ways of being. And it will go in and connect what that means in your body that, oh, you have control with the little gas, turning it up and turning it down in your body. That's going to connect differently in your mental state or emotional state. But it does. It works that way because... This is, this is what I'm explaining to my clients is your subconscious mind is like a five years old and he likes to create. He likes color. He likes music. He likes art and he likes different things. But shape forms and this is how we're going to use his language under hypnosis to reach your unconscious mind and so I often warn my client before I say don't worry your analytical mind will say what is that I'm going to do that I was going to be no logic no effects that that we just push it away a little bit this is not the language of your unconscious mind. And we're going to speak that language and you're going to see that it really works well. That's perfect. I love that. Yes. And you're right. That does often happen. People are going, what is happening right now? What's going yes. Just go with it. It's okay. And sometimes they'll remember and sometimes they won't or they'll remember little tiny pieces of it. And I think people are often afraid when something like that comes up, when they're like, oh, what's, you know, their brain is going in different, that they're doing it wrong or that they're failing. Or I tell people before we go in, you can't do it wrong. Don't worry about it. If your mind starts thinking about things, just let it kind of float on by and just follow along. It'll be okay. Exactly. And this is not woo-woo as some people might still think hypnosis is. It's just imaginary circumstances experience that you live in your internal world and I really think that when you have your internal world that is strong and healthy I mean your external world is strong and healthy too yeah and I think what you just described with the mountain scene and having control and numbing the numbing <laughs> a hard word to say anesthetization uh, the numbingness and giving them the power to choose where that goes when they need it is incredible and can make such a difference for someone because what also happens I love that in hypnosis we're able to take away the nausea take away the IBS or the diarrhea or any digestive issues that are there but we're also able to add in those things that they really do need like a sense of control like confidence like relaxation to relieve the anxiety of the situation yeah. to have a comfort inside of themselves that they wouldn't have otherwise. People don't realize that I think sometimes that it's not just about getting rid of the thing that they don't want, but it's about helping them to establish a path of feeling good. Exactly. Yeah. And a certain yeah. habit, a new habit, new better habit. Yes. I had someone the other day tell me that it's like giving them an automatic superpower. And I thought, that's great. An automatic superpower because it's on auto now. You know, you have this superpower power of being confident and okay with what's happening around you, but still feeling in control of things and knowing that you can do it. I love that idea. So you do that, you work with people like that. And then I love because obviously you and I had a little bit of conversation before we jumped yeah. on. You talked about all the different things that you do in the areas that you work in. And another one that's really valuable that you really do kind of center in and work with is, or having right now working with people is men in relationships. And yes. can you share a little bit about that? Yes. At the moment, for example, I have one client that have repeated marriage and divorce and marriage and divorce and marriage. And this is often when you ask a few questions about how that person have been raised, it's of course related to the mother and often is related to the mother. And that person, for example, in particular, his mother died when he was born and he heard his father saying all the time, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. So it's difficult to build yourself after this, but he did and he did well and is a doctor today and is very successful. Everything is okay except woman. Yeah, that's some of the work that I do that I love that 
in the trauma area. And that is a trauma. People don't realize that traumas happen even before we're born sometimes in yes. life that stay with us, that anchor in because our subconscious creates a little version of us back in that time that protects us, that steps forward and says, I've got you. And then we move forward. And sometimes that little version gets stuck back there in that difficult time. And when we're able to go back and acknowledge and become aware of and either integrate or dissolve that part, it really helps us to clear the way ahead. And it's magic how that will clear the relationship issues that will clear the physical issues that happen, the anger, the anxiety, things like that. Yes. You see that happening when you go back and you kind of connect with that part of that person? Yeah, you can see some repetitive pattern. But yesterday with my client, I was really astonished how the subconscious mind worked because I did a very small, I would say, not elongated regression. And he went back to the first memory because he's eating sugar and sweets on the evening, he cannot help himself. And he really wanted to get rid of that. I said, okay, no problem did a regression and it went to a time when it was six months old and it was a nun who gave him the milk bottle. So you see how related it is for the subconscious mind to have some comfort and from that time, from that abundant child who was with some nun, not who was his mother and couldn't help today I mean every evening eating something when he had an argue with his girlfriend or his partner. So we did some work around this and it's beautiful because when you really see physically and and mentally a release into the person, either a tear or something, something happening. I say it's just very beautiful how then it all comes back together and it's just like open drawer that was just open for so many years and there they start to go back again and in order and in the right way really. Yes. And what's interesting is just like with going back to that six month old little one, we don't realize that we might have something that's way back and that what might be considered a trauma or something that anchored in at that tiny young age, it wouldn't face us now. It's like, oh, that wouldn't be a big deal. But to that little baby, it was a huge deal. They lost their mother. There was this whole thing that they were feeling and not understanding. And to have that little tiny moment of comfort, of course, your subconscious is going to go, oh, okay, we've got that. That's a foundational thing now that is in your hard drive that goes forward with you throughout life. And that happens so many times in so many ways. And I tell people, if you're experiencing something, there's something way back that you wouldn't even think twice about now. But that little tiny version of you has it in there and is living in that space. And so we need to acknowledge that. We need to bring that into an awareness for ourselves. People think that was just my life. That was how it was. But when you start talking about it, there can be things in there that definitely are what I would call, I guess, predispositions for some of the things that are going to anchor in. Premature birth can be very traumatic, can be something that is very difficult for a little one to deal with. Divorce in the family, the loss of a parent, especially for men, it's the mother that when they have that connection with the mother that is a loss of some kind, it's definitely going to anchor something in, in that foundation way of going forward. And so looking at all the things that happen in life, we might just think that was just life. But if you're struggling with something, it's a really good indication to say, let's go have a look. Let's just go a little deeper and see if there's anything. And I think hypnosis is like the magic doorway to that. It opens up a way for us to heal so many little tiny pieces and parts of us to allow us to be whole again. And oftentimes when you go back to that very first thing, when you go back and you get the roots and you're able to pull that little tiny piece out, that sliver, everything else goes away. This life, our life is all about love or lack of love. This is just life, you know, <laughs> this is <laughs> life is emotion as well, but it's all about love or lack of love to some degrees, of course. Because when those things happen, when you're that tiny, that is your language. That's the only language you really understand is that energy of love. And when it's not there, when it's kind of taken away or you're separated from it in some way, maybe mom had to go to the hospital for a period of time after birth or they did pass away or there was some sort of separation. When that baby has that only understanding of that connection,
connection and it's severed even for a little period of time, it can leave them not understanding or feeling alone or feeling abandoned and not even understanding those feelings, but it's there because it's primal. Would that be the right word? It's program really, yeah. And so when they come out of that for you and they come back, what do they say to you about what they're feeling after they find that situation or that acknowledgement? Or do they know in that moment that something's wrong? I always have the same reaction. Anyone just like, I would never thought that was that. I say, of course you didn't. Consciously you didn't, of course, because it was unconscious. <laughs> I would never imagine that. And I said, that's the beauty of your unconscious mind. You have the superpower. The superpower is there. You, you don't need to control everything. You can just give that control to your unconscious mind because it knows what to do and what to do to get better, to heal himself, really. Yes. And so do they come out and go, oh, and something's changed for them and maybe not even be able to describe. Yes, because it's the new understanding, because depends what I'm dealing with under hypnosis. But often I ask as well then to the client under hypnosis, what do you think that made you did in your life? The other question is, what do you think that makes you avoiding in your life? And then often there is tears, you know, because there's a realization. It's about making conscious what it was in conscious. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing about the unconscious too, I think, especially with sometimes with those traumas from a young age, is again, the brain is going to sometimes create something. It might not even be something you understand because maybe it's too traumatic for you to recognize or relive or it's going to re-traumatize you. And so it does something different for you, but works out the situation in there. Or maybe you don't even remember everything that happened in the session just because it's a protection mode for you. But you have that feeling when you come out of, oh, something's changed. Yes, but I don't do regression to everyone. I tell them if they want, that's an option they can have. But it's not necessary to go on the path and to get better. Because, of course, if you spend too much time to dig, 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 you'll find endless problems to resolve. So I never really stay into regression too long. I just ask if they if there is a request from the clients i do it and often it is actually people wants to know the bottom of things you know i do it a little bit differently so i'll say that for me regression is i'll take them there anytime i do a lot of work in that and i don't dig up all the little things i let the subconscious go and find the root because when you pull out the root all the other little branches all of those other little things you don't need an awareness of those you don't need anything because you're pulling like the whole plant out i guess is what you would say. So you don't have to pull out the leaves one at a time in the work that I do. You go pull the root and then the rest of it is taken. So with me, I'm always happy to do that and go, let's just go get rid of that. And then I work on some of the other things of like boosting the confidence or doing some of those things that they need to do. And of course, it's always different depending on the person that I'm working with, because as I'm talking with them, and I'm sure you find this too, it's going to be very specific in, of course, the words they choose that they need you to clear out this or strengthen that. And so it's very individual in the sessions. Do you find that too? Yeah, I tailor it as much as possible because everyone is different, everyone is unique and there is no like one general thing you can apply to everyone, I think. I use the hobby of the person, I use what they like and I tailor and change the scenery, change things, change things. So they resonate with the person and they can imagine themselves doing this, yes. I think we all have a general outline or kind of a foundational way of working with people, whatever that is for you and whatever the way is that you use. But it's always going to be very personalized in what you need because everybody needs something a tiny bit different. I mean, even if this person needs weight loss and this person needs weight loss, they're going to be very different in how it works for them, what's going to boost them in terms of moving forward or what's going to really need to be addressed from why is that happening for you? Why are you overeating or why are you never able to gain weight? Or what is the situation that you're personally struggling with? Thank you so much for having this conversation. Thank you, you, Laura, for having me. It was a pleasure. It was a joy to talk with you and to explore the different ways that we do things and to explore the different ways that hypnosis can help because a lot of people aren't aware that it can help. Exactly, yes. That it can help in relationships, that it can help in all the different ways that we're able to provide. And I really want to get that word out there to more and more people.
because I don't want to be the last ditch effort of, okay, I've tried everything else. I want them to come to us first so that yeah. they can see the best way possible that they're making the changes. And you're completely right. Yes. So, okay, well, go ahead. And if you don't mind, of course, it'll be in the show notes, but tell people where they can find you and connect with you. Yes. So for hypnosis, you can check Ophélie Martin Hypnosis. Dot fr. And that's my website. If you want to take an appointment, I'd be glad. Go explore and get to know her a little bit because she has some other secret superpowers in there too that <laughs> are super fun. And go get to know her better. Thank you, Ophelia, so much. And I hope that you have a wonderful week, Change Gang, and that you meet me right here same time next week. Happy day. I hope today's episode was interesting and helpful to you in some way. If so, find someone to share it with. Maybe it will help them too. If you'd like to know more about anything discussed here today, you can find all the places to connect with me and the guest speakers in the show notes. Or go to lauraordeal.com, L-A-U-R-A-O-R-D-I-L-E.com, and you can reach out to me there. Until next time, ask when you need help, be kind to yourself, and have a happy day.